So now that we have our Spring Security up and running, it is time to make the user login. What does login entail? It is simply converting user credentials, that is, email and password, to something that can be used for other requests, and that is a JWT token. So let's go to the computer and let's do that. So what is the first thing that a user of your API needs to do? They need to authenticate. So let's implement a login endpoint. Inside my controller package, I will create a new class and call it auth controller. Let's make this a REST controller with required args constructor and let's uh, make a login endpoint. Let's make this one post and let's put it under, let's say auth login. Now, what does a user of your API call your login endpoint with? with some username and a password. So let's make a model for that request. In my application package, I'm gonna make a new package and call it model. And I'm gonna make uh, a class and call it login request. Let's have getters and let's include email. This is what I'm going to use instead of a username. And it also needs a password. Now with our login request done, let's pass that as our request body. Let's make it validated. Even though we didn't add any validation, this might come in handy later if somebody decides to add validation. Uh, it's going to have login request and let's call it request. If a user authenticates successfully, what do they get back? They get some sort of a token, a JWT token or JWT token in our case. So let's make another model and call this one login response. Login response. Let's add some getters and let's put a builder for nicer code and the only thing that it is going to return is going to be, let's call this access token. Now let's make our login method return login response. And just to test it, let's try and make a new login response with and access token, blah, blah, blah. Let's build and run the application. Let's bring in Postman and let's go to auth login. That is not a get, that is a post. And that uses JSON. Forbidden. Ah, we don't have access to our endpoint yet, so let's fix that. Open up your web security config again, and just as you've authorized a root path, let's also authorize auth slash login. Rerun the application, bring back the postman, and let's try it again. And there you have it. This is our fake token. So let's expand on this. Let's bring Postman away from the screen. And this is where we need to bring in another dependency. So let's open our build Gradle and let me bring in another implementation from com.auth0 colon java dash jwt version 4.2.2, but you should probably use whatever is the most recent. When it comes to security dependencies, always try to use the latest versions because they will have fixed the security vulnerabilities. All right, with the Auth0 Java Jot brought in, let's refresh our Gradle, let it download the library, 
And now let's continue with the token issuing. So inside our security package, let's create a new class and let's call this GWT issuer. And let's mark this as a component so that it's managed by Spring. And let's include a method public string issue. So whenever we call this, this is going to issue a JWT token. A token needs to be issued to somebody. And in this case, it's going to be some sort of a user ID. So let's add an argument for a user ID. Then I also want to have user email inside my token. So let's also add an argument of email. And lastly, user will have some sort of a role. So let's add a list of strings. You can make it a lot smarter later. For this tutorial, I'm just gonna use a list of strings. And let's call these roles. Now let's issue that token. Do a return and with capitals JWT. And you will get a couple of options, but use one which comes from com.auth0.jwt. And from jot do create. This will create a builder. Jot token needs to be signed with some sort of a secret key or some sort of an asymmetric encryption methods. So do sign. And then it is asking for an algorithm. Let's make it really simple in the beginning and let's use algorithm dot hmac256. And now it is asking for a secret. So just for now, let's do and make this secret. We're going to fix this in a moment. And that is our basic token. But we're not using our parameters, so let's actually assign a subject to our token and then we can do with subject and it requires a string and our user ID is along. So let's do string value of user ID. What else does a token need? A token needs some sort of expiration because if it gets leaked and it doesn't have an expiration date, then hackers can access your system no matter what. So let's add some sort of expiration, do a with, expires at, and you can have an instant, which is great because it is a really convenient API. Let's do instant now and then do plus. And let's, uh, let's issue this for a duration of one day. Usually you will want your tokens to live very short, minutes at most, like five minutes, and then you're gonna use refresh token to refresh that. But for the sake of this tutorial and for the sake of development is, let's just do it a duration of one day. Okay, next up we have email as our argument. And email is not a standard of jot, but you can add custom claims to it. So let's do a with claim. And let's call this one just E, or you could type email full, but let's try and make it short. Let's call it E and pass email. Now let's do just another claim. And this, uh, let's call it, these are going to be our roles. So I'm just going to call them A, short for authorities. And we can pass in roles. And it will conveniently know that this is a list and it will know what to do with it. So that is our JOT issuer done. Let's actually use it inside the controller. Open up our auth controller back up and inject our JOT issuer. So just do a private final JOT issuer. Let's call it JOT issuer. And just in case you don't know how this works, we have this required arcs constructor at the top, which basically creates a constructor for you. And anything that is final here will get injected. This is just the same as making a constructor such as this one. It's just a lot less code and it's a lot more convenient. 
So let's call our issue function. Let's do a var token equals dot issuer dot issue. And let's issue it just temporarily for user ID one email. We can take this from the request and roles. Let's do a list of user. So that's a single role of user. And instead of blah, 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 let's pass in the token that we just generated. Let's launch the application and see if it works. All right, let's try and send it again. And there is the token. So let me just uh, for a moment here, pass an email of test at test.com. That's always a great email. I wonder how much spam the owners of test.com are getting. Probably a lot. Anyway, but here is our token. Let's check if it's actually a token. So let me bring in my browser again and go to jwt.io and paste the token that I just copied. And as you can see, there is a header and inside the payload is actually our data. Test at test.com as an email of the user, an array of one element of role user and subject of user ID one. Great, it is working. Even though it says invalid signature, if I just type in a secret here, it will say that signature is verified because secret is our secret. But let's get back to the code and make this a little bit more configurable. Let's bring everything away and let's open the JOT issuer again. So hard coding your secrets, such as this one, is a big no-no. And I'm not teaching you to do that. I'm going to teach you the proper way. So let's create some spring configuration properties for this one. Inside my security package, I am going to create another class and I'm going to call this JWT properties. Let's tag this as configuration and configuration properties. And let's give this a prefix of security.jwt. Also get some of those Lombok getters and setters just for convenience. And let's create a private string secret key. So what this does is this allows us to actually configure our secret key inside of the application properties and change it depending on the environment. So if I open my application properties, and actually before I do that, let me just rename that to application.yaml because nobody likes properties and everybody loves YAML. Let's open application YAML and as here, I defined it as security.chat. Let's do security GWT and then secret key. And let's make it something secret. For development, it can be anything. For prod, this has to be something really, really difficult to guess and really, really long. So let's just do a very secret key. Oh my God. Why is it so secret? Don't tell anybody. And that's okay. It's very difficult to guess if, uh, if you're just guessing and it will still work. Now let's make our issuer actually use this configuration property. So open your jot issuer class and put required arcs constructor on top of it. And let's inject our class that we just made, which is, which is GWT properties. Well, let's call this properties. And instead of hard coding a secret here, let's just uh, do properties get secret key. Now let's run the application and try this again. Let's bring in Postman. Let's log in. And let's check the website to see if it, to see if anything changed. Now, if we paste this here, it will say invalid signature because it's still using the old secret key. 
But if I just took what we configured here and then paste this here, the signature is valid. So that's great, our token is working. Let me put this away for a moment. By the way, you've probably noticed that IntelliJ is complaining here about this secret key right here and it says cannot resolve configuration property. If you go back to your JOD properties, you might see that at the top it says spring boot configuration annotation processor not configured. Let's fix that real quick. If you go to your build.gradle file and just put this annotation processor in, so that is annotation processor, comes from spring framework, blah, 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 spring boot configuration processor, and then refresh that. And now when you go back to some properties file, it says rerun spring boot configuration, blah, 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 just relaunch your application, that's all you need to do. If it doesn't work for you when you relaunch the application, go to your IntelliJ settings and Go to Build Execution Deployment, Compiler, Annotation Processors, and just check Enable Annotation Processing. Do OK. And now, when you rerun your application, and go to your application.yaml or Properties, it is no longer complaining about the secret key. And a really cool thing is if you write a Java doc on top of this one, rerun the application and go to your application YAML. If you look at the documentation of this configuration property, it says exactly what you wrote in the Java doc. How cool is that? Always document your stuff. But that is only one step of issuing a fake JWT token, even though it is a valid token. Oh boy, that turned out to be quite a long video. Now that we have our JWT token issued, doesn't matter that it's a fake login, we should start using it in subsequent requests. And that's exactly what we're gonna do in the next video. And before you click off, I'd like to remind you to like this video so you can refer back to it later. And if you like this kind of content, maybe consider subscribing. And if you're finding this useful, maybe share it with your colleagues, maybe they will find it useful too. All right, now let's get on to the next video.